Hi guys, I just wanted to show you some things you could do to um, get a little bit more depth with your data. So what I've done over here is I've recreated, um, you know, a, a Spearman ranking. And one thing you might do is you might look for odd data. You might look for a point that's, that's an outlier or um, something like that. And you might do a little research around that point. Um, find a news article, find some uh, some other data that helps to show why that point is maybe an outlier. You don't see any of those here, so I'm going to show you something different. Um, by the way, so you know, I totally made up these numbers. Or no, I'm sorry, these are total. These are uh, different numbers than what I showed you before. So I've put in two new columns here, and these are the letters in the name of the country. So there's seven letters in Belgium, et cetera, et cetera, and I've ranked them. Now, I don't expect there to be any correlation between the name, number of letters in the country and the number of doctors um, that are in each respective country. Oh, that's where, I, um, that's where I made things up. Those doctor numbers are not, are not accurate. Um, anyhow... Um, so a couple things you might want to do. You first off might want to find out the Spearman ranking of your new statistic. So again, you need to do something real. You might look at um, the underlying economic or social or political scores for the countries you've chosen. Um, you might choose to do something different, their GDP per capita, um, you might go back to Gapminder and find a related statistic that might shed a little bit more light on it for that country. Um, no matter what you do, remember, you ought to be fairly quick in doing it. Once you've put in your new data and then ranked it, keep in mind that you need to um, sort it correctly so that you don't lose your previous data. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a Spearman ranking for this new, this is another x-axis that you're creating. So if you go here to the D number, you can take this, and once the cursor changes, it'll be the uh, arrows, the four arrows for you. You can drag that over, and you see that that score is going to change. It was negative 2 before and 4. Now it's 6 and 36 because it's doing 9 minus 3 rather than 1 minus 3. Once you've done that, you should be able to take this and just drag it down through. And it's going to take all of these formulas and move them to the new correct place. And you see now it gives me a correlation score of 0.17 which is saying, no, there's no correlation between the two things, which is what I would expect. However, I would want to graph that as well. And how am I going to do that? Well, I'm simply going to go here down to my chart. And I'm going to right click, select data. And I want to add, I think on Microsoft it just says add. I want to add a series. So I'm going to do that here. The x values are going to be these ranks, so I'm just going to go select them. And the y values are going to be your original, oh, I don't know how to use max, are going to be the ranks of the original y values which are there and I'm going to say okay okay I'm going to take this new data and add trend lines and do all that sort of thing um, I'm not exactly sure how to do that on a Mac right now so I'm going to let it go um, but yeah you'd want to add a trend line but you can see that my data is uh, clearly all over the place, showing that there's no real um, correlation between the two. Okay, so find something else to go further into depth with, and um, 
then the only other thing to make you aware of, I explained this to one class but not the other, if you go back to the OneNote, there's this here, and it just gives a little bit more detail on what it is that you've done. So for example, easiest way to look at it is here. Oh no. And basically what this is showing is how likely is it that this is just circumstantial, that it's just a coincidence. And what you want is you want the number that you're using, which is 15, and you've got 15 examples, and it's going to be the number of pairs of items in the sample minus 2. So it's 15 pairs minus 2, which is 13. And then you take that number up to your Spearman rank. So for the good one I did, I had 0 0.95. Well, that's telling you that it's almost, well, it's above here. So it's saying that 0 0.95, the likelihood of that correlation being um, chance or uh, circumstantial, is less than 0.1%. So it's, it's either causing uh, the other thing or it comes from the same cause. Whereas the second one, the fake one I did, came off at 0 0.13. So 13 and 0 0.13 is in here. And it's saying, yeah, there's not very much of a chance that these are um, correlated. Okay? Um, so anyway, you ought to include that as well and just kind of talk about that in your lab report. And uh, that's all.